Hello everyone, thank you for joining us for 292 Baby Educational Videos, Support for Parents and Caregivers of Infants. I would like you to know that all of the experts featured in our video series have given freely of their time and all are from the Early Childhood Community of Greater Rochester. On behalf of everyone affiliated with the 292 Baby Project, we wish you the very best of luck with your children. 292 Baby is a community collaboration administered by Monroe Community College. Our topic for today is breastfeeding. So if you're a person who is interested in breastfeeding and right in our community right at the moment, there's probably, oh, 2,000 people who are nursing their kids at the moment. So this show is um, really just for you. And we are thrilled to have with us Dr. Sue Tansky. And Sue, thank you so much for joining us. And Sue, um, she's, hello, Ryan, you're just too cute. <laughs> Sue is a pediatrician at the Golisano Children's Hospital at Strong and at the Rochester General Pediatric Associates. Yes. And I think maybe more appropriate for the moment, you're a mom. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is Ryan, and uh, he's brother of Will, two-year-old yes. Will, but Ryan's three and a half months old. Mm -hmm. And uh, congratulations. Thank you. And he is just too cute. Thank <laughs> you, you very know, much. So. <laughs> Hello. Are you, did you know you're the star of a TV show? Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me here. I'm okay. really delighted to be here. It's great. Thank you. Um, you know, we're talking breastfeeding, mm -hmm. and um, it's just uh, a huge issue, an important issue, and um, I think maybe a place where we can start is that um, you're a mom, you're in the hospital, and all of a sudden you're facing it for the first time. It's got to be scary. It, it is a little scary. It's, it's, not, it's a very natural thing, but it's also a learned skill, mm -hmm. and it takes a lot of time and a lot of patience, but it's... It's probably the hardest thing I've ever done, but it's the most wonderful thing I've ever done. It's mm -hmm. incredibly rewarding. Yep. I nursed my first son until he started walking, and when he started walking, he was no longer interested. Oh yeah. So he weaned himself when he was just about 10 months old. Mm -hmm. My goal was a year. Uh, my goal with Ryan is a year or more. Mm -hmm. um, even though I'm a mom twice, and I'm a pediatrician, and I help mothers with breastfeeding all the time, mm -hmm. I don't consider myself an expert because mm -hmm. every nursing pair is unique. Every nursing pair has its own challenges, mm -hmm. and so every experience is different. So everything I say has the caveat that your experience may be different. Yeah. Um, and that's real important to know and important that you ask for help on an individual basis. So ask your pediatrician, ask a lactation consultant if you have mm -hmm. questions, because every situation is different. So I'll talk a little bit about my, my personal experiences, but that may not be exactly what everyone else had. Okay. Uh, so you're right, you start in the hospital, you've maybe gone to prenatal classes, you know about breastfeeding, you know all the benefits, mm -hmm. you know about the bonding, you know about sharing your immune system with your baby and that it's wonderful, and they hand you your baby after he or she is born, and the goal is to get the baby on breast within the first hour of life, because there's a period of time where they kind of imprint, and when they, they, if they learn how to latch on the earlier the better mm -hmm. is basically how it goes. Mm -hmm. And they hand you the baby and the baby starts shaking his head and worming his way and mm -hmm. they're born with this thing called the rooting re reflex and he probably won't do it because he's not hungry anymore mm -hmm. but if you stroke their cheek mm -hmm. they turn towards what's stroking their cheek so if you touch them on their left cheek they mm -hmm. turn to the left if you stroke them on the right cheek they turn to the right and if you tuck them in the middle they move their face forward and they open their mouth mm -hmm. and that's how you get them on the breast the first time even though that's not all of it. <laughs> yeah. Now, that's something that um, um, if they're hungry, well, the first time they're probably, mm -hmm. they probably are hungry, but like right now, he didn't do it. Is it because he's not hungry? It's because he's not hungry and also because he's growing out of his rooting reflex. The rooting reflex is present at okay. birth. It's even present with, with premature babies. It's, mm -hmm. it's there. It's, it's a powerful reflex. Yeah, I remember uh, that sound. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but he, they, they're, not as, they're not as likely to do it if he's not hungry. If he, he sh the feeding cues that you see are move, moving their mouth, mm -hmm. smacking their lips. He brings his hands to his mouth and starts sucking on his fingers, uh, making little grunting noises. Mm -hmm. And so there's some subtle feeding cues. If you wait till they're crying, sometimes they're so hungry, it's mm -hmm. harder for them to latch on. Yep. Um, but the, the pieces of the latch that you're looking for, you want their mouth to be wide open for them to grab onto the breast. And you want their lips to be flanged, so like fish lips. Mm -hmm. And you want their nose to touch the, the breast, and you want their chin to touch the breast, mm -hmm. which is surprises some people, but babies' noses are designed that they can breathe from the sides of their nose. Mm -hmm. So to have a really good latch, you want them to be right up against the breast, <coughs> belly to belly. Bless you. Bless you. Bless, Bless you. you. <laughs> belly to belly. Uh -huh. And I can show you the positioning, mm -hmm. uh, even though he won't be actually on because he's not going to be interested, I don't think. Um, a mom in tune with her baby? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, well, no. he's just interested in, in playing and yeah. lights and yeah. 
everything else. Um, but those are the parts, and once they're on the breast, you want to listen for swallowing. In the very beginning, you're just going to hear them you know, sucking, sucking, sucking. You don't want to hear a lot of smacking or clicking because that means that they're getting air, mm -hmm. and that's going to really make your nipples sore. Mm -hmm. um, they should really have a nice seal on the breast with mm -hmm. their whole mouth on there, their chin and their no nose mm -hmm. touching. Now, and can a mom actually see that? Or yes. Or is that something you feel, that connection? Uh, you can see it depending on the angle that you are depending on the angle of the baby. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's helpful to have someone else take a look and mm -hmm. just make sure that everything is in line. But you can feel if it's if it's not right because they, the tongue hits the nipple in a way that is uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, so that that's a little less comfortable than if they have a, a really good latch. Yeah, okay. So, so right off the bat in the first hour, mm -hmm. and that's, that's try. kind of amazing. And there's the benefit of having them, you say the sooner the better. Mm -hmm. Is that because they just learn it quicker? They learn it quicker, and a lot of, in the first hour or two, they're in a after birth. As, as long as it's a, a normal birth and the baby, the baby's healthy and doesn't have any medical problems that they need to be whisked away for mm -hmm. anything, that's their quiet alert phase, and that's mm -hmm. a wonderful period of time when they're awake. They're quiet. They're looking at the world for the first time, and it's a great opportunity for them to learn how to nurse. Mm -hmm. After that, they get sleepy, and sometimes they'll sleep for several hours. Mm -hmm. And if you try to nurse after they've gone through their quiet alert phase into that sleepy phase, mm -hmm. it's much more difficult. And you really want to get a nursing baby on breast as soon as possible so that they can start getting a little bit of nutrition as mm -hmm. well. Yep. The, the first breast milk, which I know you talked about with Dr. Lawrence, is called colostrum. Mm -hmm. And even though you can't, a nursing mom can't really get the milk out, the baby can get it out. And there's it's early milk, it's very, it's kind of a yellowish color, mm -hmm. very rich in nutrients. And so even though you can't squeeze anything out and you think there's nothing there, the baby is getting something. Mm -hmm. And it's enough that they get don't get dehydrated and they get their nutrition and they get a lot of immune boost. I remember a fear that we had in the beginning because because of that it didn't seem like there was enough coming out that we thought should yeah. and at the same time which we now know is natural is that the baby lost a little weight. Right. So you're sitting there you're nursing and go, oh there's not much coming out my baby's losing weight right and you have doubts you have uh, we had a lot of self-doubts there. Oh absolutely. Natural? I, absolutely yeah. and, and I echo those I had a ton of self-doubt uh, with my first son my milk didn't come in f until day five which is not that unusual for a first-time mom. And Will was losing weight. He was getting more and more jaundiced. Uh, jaundice is when the skin turns yellowish. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot of reasons why babies can be jaundiced. Sometimes it's just because they're not quite cycling through mm -hmm. enough. They're not quite getting enough to eat and drink so they don't poop out the little bit of jaundice that's kind of a natural thing. Mm -hmm. He was getting more and more jaundice. He was losing weight. And every day I'd look at him and I'd say, he's getting yellower. <laughs> And uh, I brought him to the pediatrician, and indeed, he was really jaundiced, and he was a, a mm -hmm. baby step away from being admitted for phototherapy to the hospital mm -hmm. to get rid of the bilirubin, get rid of the jaundice. And um, it was awful, and I thought, how can I do this? Uh, it's not working. Yeah. I, I was so bound and determined that this was going to work, and I felt like a failure. Mm -hmm. I was, it, was, it was a really emotional time for me, not only because I just had this baby, but... And your first one. My first one. Yeah. And you figure, I, I've, I teach people this. I should, I should feel more comfortable with yeah. it. But I was absolutely devastated yeah. that it was so hard. And we kind of slogged through, and my pediatrician said, I need you to nurse him every two hours around the clock. And I said, every two hours? He nurses for 45 minutes at a time. Yeah. So we did it, and we avoided a hospitalization. We were very fortunate it, that it worked. Mm -hmm. It won't work for everybody. And my milk came in about a day and a half later. Yeah. And from then on, we were fine. Yeah. But in those first, that first week, it was it was incredibly difficult. Yeah. It was very hard. It, he was just always at the breast, and I thought, how could this possibly be yep. normal? But it is. You know, Dr. Lawrence was telling about the uh, American Academy of Pediatrics mm -hmm. and what the goal is to have so many people nursing for such an amount of time. Right. But it strikes me that that period of time that you've just described, those first few days, when the mom and the dad can help, mm -hmm. the, but they have to, they have to adjust. And is that a time when a lot of people just give up? Out of, it is. And is it out of fear a lot of it? Some of it's out of fear of the unknown because your milk's not in yet mm -hmm. if your milk hasn't come in. And it, it, in the beginning, when you're first establishing the baby's learning how to lash, you're learning how to, commun how to kind of work with your baby, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a strong relationship. You learn a lot. Hi, buddy. <laughs> um, but it's, it's, it's really hard, and it's frustrating, and most people 
if they're not maybe not most a lot of people if they're going to if they're going to give up mm -hmm. will do it in the first week it also there's there's a little discomfort associated with it when they first get on in that first week mm -hmm. every time they get on that breast you, there's a little whoa yeah and it passes yeah but you have to be confident that it's going to go away it's mm -hmm. really it's a temporary thing uh, especially when they're really hungry and they're, they're are you unhappy or are you okay? You want to stand up? Well, hello. <laughs> Hi. How's that? Um, I completely forgot my thought. What was I saying when they're when you're trying to get them? What was my thought? <laughs> we were working through the the fear of. of oh, the the fear and and the discomfort. Yes. Um, you're they're kind of learning how to do it. The technique may not be perfect. Mm -hmm. If their technique isn't good, uh, sometimes it makes the nipple sore. Yeah. And. Uh, one of the things to watch for, actually a troubleshooting thing, is when the baby is, is at breast, you want to make sure that their lips are out, the mm -hmm. lower lip especially, and the upper lip, kind of the fish lips as I mentioned mm -hmm. earlier. And the reason for that is because when a baby is nursing, it's not just suction. When they suck from a bottle, it's just suction. When they're nursing from a breast, there's a kind of a stripping motion that they do with their tongue. So their tongue needs to go above their gum line, kind of like this. Mm -hmm. And if the lower lip is tucked in, that gets in the way of their tongue coming out. And so they're just suckling and they're not using their tongue to bring the milk forward. Mm -hmm. And that can cause discomfort. And I can vouch for this. I <laughs> yeah. was extremely uncomfortable with Ryan. Mm -hmm. um, two very different nursing experiences between my two kids. Mm -hmm. uh, Will was the very leisurely 45 <laughs> minutes. I read novel after novel, just having him sit there and nurse. <laughs> yeah. And he just nurse slowly. Yeah. And Ryan's a barracuda. He nurses and from day one, just down to business. Gets it done, five minutes, and you know he's yep. got the bulk of it, and then he kind of plays and does his thing. Mm -hmm. But Smoke a cigarette. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know. Very, very fast, yeah. and very vigorous, and very hard, yeah. to the point that I actually, my nipples were, were actually bleeding a little bit. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I know it was a technique problem. It hurt like the dickens. I can only imagine. And <laughs> you know. it was a little off-putting. Yeah. Um, but we, you, I was determined that yeah. this was going to work because I knew it worked really well with Will. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, Ryan's an exclusively breastfed baby, and he's almost 16 pounds at three and a half months. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so he's a big guy. You know, there was another thing I thought, too, and it was just, a, I'm sure, a social conditioning, was that if you only got breast milk, how could that be enough? Right. You know, do a lot of people think that? They do. Yeah. They do. And there's such a wide range of normal for weight gain. Yeah. Uh, hi, bud. <laughs> um, the... the the thing about formula or expressed milk, breast milk is that you can actually see how much they drink. You can see what's going in. Oh yeah, and right, right. When yeah. it's coming from the breast, you don't yeah. know. Yeah. So you gotta you gotta make sure that they're getting heavier and mm -hmm. making their wet diapers and making making poops. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's real important that you just go by that because you don't know if they're getting four ounces or six yeah. ounces or. And even the poops are different on a breastfed baby. They are. They don't yeah. smell as bad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, contrary to popular belief, right? No, they're not bad at all. Oh, I know, I know. People say, like, oh, that can't be possible. Oh, no. But, they're, yeah. They kind of smell sweet, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I know that's a little weird, but. No, well, um, okay, but you stuck with it. And I did. you got past the hard times, and now it's, um, it's, it's, it's automatic. It's pretty easy, yeah. yes. Yeah. I, with a busy two year old in the house, I often have to chase after him. Ryan is so flexible, I can actually keep him on the breast and walk around the house now. Yeah, yeah. I could never have done that with my first. Uh, yeah. It's just different styles. And yeah. Well, we're going to go to a break here okay. uh, for a couple of minutes, and um, when we come back, maybe we can look at some of those positioning sure. and, uh, and some of the other questions. And what we'd like to do is bring to you some newborn tips this week, and many of these tips are just common advice that you may or may not have heard before, but I'd like to start out with one important safety message, and that is never shake a baby. You've seen the commercials, shaking a baby can be very harmful, and we just want to get that message out over and over again. So try not to and even if a fit of frustration or even an attempt to soothe your baby, shaking is not what we want to do. Cuddling, holding, rocking, those are all fine. If you find yourself feeling that frustrated, just go ahead and let your baby down. Sleeping patterns. Newborns do sleep a lot, and they can sleep up to 18 to 20 hours. So if you find your, your baby just sleeping excessively, as long as he's waking up at three to four hours, he's probably fine. If you find your baby skipping a feeding, sleeping straight through to the, the next feeding, that could be a problem. And it's often an early sign of illness if your baby's not waking up at the expected time for a feeding. So if they're going more than six or seven hours in a row without waking to feed, give your doctor a call. Keep your baby smoke-free. 
you've heard the, the difficulties of secondhand smoke. Babies are even more prone to some of those difficulties, and they include an increased risk for infection, influenza, respiratory infections, an increased risk of ear infections, because that's part of the respiratory tree, and also an increased risk of colic. And for fussy babies, some of that exposure to smoke can make them even fussier. So if you can't quit your smoking yourself, at least make the commitment that you're going to smoke outside of the house so that your baby is not getting exposed. The back to sleep campaign, that just means when you put your baby to sleep, put him on his back. Babies will have a much lower risk of sudden infant death syndrome and will be safer with that back sleeping position. And the last one is when you're getting ready to go to your doctor or the next well child visit, go ahead and make a list. Most mothers will tell you that their memory was shot somewhere during delivery and they just can't remember all the things they wanted to bring up at the doctor's visit. Go ahead and make a list. We don't mind you bringing that list in. Or even better yet, give us a call at 292-BABY. That's 292-2229. And we'll help answer some of those general questions so that you can save your specific questions for your doctor when you come in to see him for your visit. And those are your newborn tips for the week. Hi everyone, welcome back to Parent Talk. I'm Jim Coffey and I am with Sue Tansky. And Sue is Dr. Sue Tansky, a pediatrician up at the Golisano Children's Hospital at Strong and the mother of three-month-old three Ryan. And uh, she's also a doctor at the Rochester General Pediatric Associates. Is that right? Have I got that right? Okay. Um, but we're talking breastfeeding and we are talking. We've got gorgeous Ryan here with us who was the beneficiary of being breastfed. And um, we've talked about some of the first things, the latching on mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. And uh, um, if you don't mind me bringing it up, we were just talking about uh, baby's poops. We kind of ended with the poops. <laughs> Let's start with the poops. Um, is it different? I mean, we talked about it doesn't smell. It's, it's, yeah. yeah. It's, it's not, not so bad smelling. And uh, breastfed baby's stooling pattern is often very different from a formula-fed baby. For mm -hmm. Most formula-fed babies poop once a day, some twice a day, maybe every other day, kind of tops. Yeah. And uh, Ryan's going on 11 days that he hasn't pooped. Oh, yeah. Um, so, and that's normal. That can be a normal thing. Mm -hmm. um, his typical pattern has been about every four to five days. This is a longer stretch, but he's not uncomfortable. He's eating fine. Mm -hmm. If you're concerned, certainly talk to your pediatrician, but it's not an un very unusual thing for a breastfed baby because breast milk is so well digested that there's not a lot left over because they use it all. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. And that's what you see when you see a breastfed baby's stool is you see a, a few little milk curds. It's kind of a yellowish color. Mm -hmm. um, they call, we call it seedy, uh -huh. and those are actually little milk curds that you see left over, and it's just really well digested, so mm -hmm. it goes through so quickly, which is why nursing babies tend to feed so frequently, mm -hmm. because it's so quickly digested, it leaves the stomach quickly, yep. so they uh, want to eat more often. Yeah, okay. Um, any tips on positioning? Maybe that's yeah, a let's good... Yeah, uh, positioning. Okay. My favorite position I can't actually demonstrate here, it's the sideline position. Because uh, I need I need to lie down, and I don't think this this uh, desk is going to be. Okay, fit the I'll go ahead. <laughs> yeah. um, the sideline position is a great position for if you want to get a little rest yourself, mm -hmm. and you basically just put the baby down. You lie down, mm -hmm. whichever side you want to go. Oh, my, my thumb sucking baby. You lie down on whichever side you would like to nurse on, mm -hmm. and uh, tummy to tummy. So you're on your side, baby's rolled facing you, mm -hmm. and. Uh, pop the baby on the breast and you can snooze right with him. Mm -hmm. And that's my favorite one for getting some rest, especially at night when he wants to nurse at 3 o'clock in the morning. Now, will you actually fall asleep? I do, yeah. often. Yeah. And then I wake up when he starts to wiggle and, and put him back in his, in his uh, crib, mm -hmm. if need be. Um, other positions, when you're sitting, I always bring a, a leg up so I'll just get myself comfortable. Mm -hmm with your hand under his bottom mm -hmm. and the baby's head in the crook of your arm. This mm -hmm. is called the cradle position. Mm -hmm. And you tuck, oh, we spit a little bit. We tuck the, um, you tuck the arm that's closest to you underneath. Mm -hmm. And then you bring the baby, oh, sorry, buddy. You bring the baby forward. And indeed, he's opening his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> he's ready for it. Yeah. But this is the cradle position. Mm -hmm. And this is a really comfortable one for a baby that's established with breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, this is kind of, you, your breast is in the way, so you can't really see if they're latched on well. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's a little bit more of an experienced position. And uh, it doesn't give you a lot of control over their head. Mm -hmm. The cross cradle, which he's almost too big for. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Brian. Cross cradle is if you use your alternate arm mm -hmm. and you have your hand under their head like this. Mm -hmm. When you're, oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. You probably got it all over me. That's okay. When, um, when you're doing the cross cradle, 
and you're bringing the baby forward, you don't want to just bring their neck forward because mm -hmm. they're just reflexively just going to bring their neck back. You want to bring their whole body forward, again, belly to belly, and you're using your hands to guide their head into position. Mm -hmm. Like I said, he's pretty big for this, but this is the position for that one, mm -hmm. and that's the cross cradle. Okay. And obviously you use your other arm to support the baby, mm -hmm. but it's the... Uh, it's this hand that helps guide his head into position. Yep. And that's a really good one in the very early times when you're really trying to get them up there, on there. Mm -hmm. So the first couple days, first weeks, especially when they're small, mm -hmm. I, I gave birth to a moose, so yeah. that one's hard because yeah. he's heavy. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. And then the other one, which is which is a, a really good one, especially for a cesarean birth or for someone who's got who's got belly pain, uh, is what's called the football position. And that one is. Hi. I know you're getting hungry, aren't you? Although it's kind of amazing. This is the football position. Mm -hmm. You generally have a pillow or something uh, to support them on your side, mm -hmm. and you basically bring the baby down like this. And so you're looking at the baby's face, mm -hmm. and you can you control the baby's head. The baby's body is supported by the pillow or whatever's, whatever's to your side, mm -hmm. and you just bring the baby up. And again, keeping their head and their body in line, mm -hmm. just because that way they're not getting wrenched forward to make them mm -hmm. go back. Yep. Hi. And and all of these positions really, there's some that lend themselves more toward earlier. They, yes, yeah. uh, the cradle position in. In my experience, it's something for a little bit more experienced pair. Mm -hmm. The first couple days, that's really tough to do because you end up moving your elbow funny and they're, they're so little and they're sloppy. Yeah. And so that one's a tough one for the first couple days. Mm -hmm. The cr cross cradle when your hand is up underneath their head or the football are really good in the first couple days. Yeah. The other good use for the different positions is if you have a plugged duct. <laughs> There are some, some problems that come up in nursing. Mm -hmm. uh, if, you, if you don't empty your breasts frequently enough, you can have a duct that gets plugged. Mm -hmm. and, uh, That's well, painful, it, isn't it? It, can be, very, it yeah. can be very uncomfortable, and it's also very funny looking. It feels like there's a cord or a piece of string running under the, mm -hmm. the surface of your skin. And yeah. so it looks really funny. They're very lumpy. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry, Rod. Here you go. Let's do this. There, it's it's uh it's pretty lumpy mm -hmm. and uh, it, it can be uncomfortable. It, a, a plugged duct can also lead to mastitis, which is a breast infection. Mm -hmm. It can make you feel pretty crummy, very flu-like symptoms. Mm -hmm. You may not have a lot of breast pain at that point. You just feel kind of fluey. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of times that can lead from a plugged duct. And with the plug, when you have a plugged duct, you want to massage the area where the plugged duct is, and if possible. Maneuver the baby so that their chin is closest to the mm -hmm. plugged duct. Um, the reason being is that the action of their jaw mm -hmm. will help to strip the milk out of that duct mm -hmm. preferentially. So you want it to, you can kind of move around a little bit if you've got some areas that are plugged. So is it kind of a how do they unplug it? Is it just it, they they unplug it themselves? You, mm -hmm. you basically they usually there's just a little piece of I guess dried milk. Mm -hmm. that, Stuck, sticks in there, yeah. and the, they nurse it out, and it works just fine. You yeah. just have to give them a chance to do it, and a little massage, warm compresses can sometimes loosen it up a little bit so that you can drain it. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a, a letdown reflex oh, yes. where you just the bru the breast just <laughs> empties right out. Yeah. Do you try to time your feeding for that, or is that is it too much for them at all one time? He brings on the milk ejection reflex. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't generally happen for me when he's not nursing. A lot of people will say if they hear a baby crying, mm -hmm. then they'll let down mm -hmm. and they quickly kind of try to put some pressure there so they don't leak everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, I've never really had a lot of problems with that, but I know some, some women really have a big problem and they mm -hmm. remind you to have an extra jacket or a sweater or no, another shirt because a lot of times you don't want to leak and make a mess. Yeah. Um, but the, it's not a timed thing. He brings on the milk ejection reflex, and it varies anywhere from 30 seconds to two minutes into a feeding. Mm -hmm. uh, for some people, it's a pretty powerful sensation. It's a kind yeah. of a tingling and, a, and a, a little bit of a, I don't even know how to describe it. It's kind of a, a strong tingle. Mm -hmm. uh, not everybody feels it, but for some people, it's pretty intense. Yeah. I know that when we would express milk or pump milk into a bottle, uh -huh. if it was if you could let down at that same time, uh, then yes. it was great. You could just you'd fill the bottle in no time. Right, and and pumping is actually a topic. I know we don't have a lot of time left. Uh, pumping is is a uh, is a is a big challenge for some people. Yeah. Uh, pumping is like I'm a I, I'm a full time back at work person, so I pump for two or three bottles a day because uh, Ryan is at daycare with his big brother, and so I. I pump at work, and sometimes it is difficult to let down for a pump. Mm -hmm. I can let down like 
no problem whatsoever for Ryan. Mm -hmm. It's no big deal. Yep. But for a pump, sometimes it's harder. Sometimes it takes longer than a couple of minutes. Yep. And that's really when the milk comes out. That's really what you're waiting for. Uh, with, with Will and with Ryan, I do something called tandem pumping, where I actually it kind of takes some dexterity. I have the baby on one breast, and I pump the other side. Mm -hmm. So he makes the letdown happen, and I just collect what happens on the other breast. Okay. And that was necessary for me because I couldn't let down very well for a pump, but yep. I was really convinced and mm -hmm. determined that I wanted to keep this going. Yep. And if you don't pump during the day, it's such a such a close relationship that what goes out is what you need. Right. And what the baby takes out is what you make. Mm -hmm. And if so, if you don't empty your breast during the day and just feed at night, your milk supply dwindles. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want that to happen, so this works. I mm -hmm. pump during the day and I get as much as I can yep. just by myself, but then I get extra. So my supply is boosted because when I nurse in morning and night, my body thinks that I need everything for him plus four ounces from the other side yep. and that's stored up for the next day. Now the pump that you use, I know they have manual pumps and they have electric pumps. Correct. Do you have a recommendation? Uh, if you're going to go back to work and want to maintain lactation during the day, the best pump is a double pump that's electric and they can be rented uh, or they can be purchased. <coughs> Uh, I know I know that WIC has some pumps that they will lend out. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they won't mind me saying that. Yeah. Uh, I know that the, some of the insurance plans will also uh, buy you one, but there tend to be smaller pumps mm -hmm. or manual pumps. Uh, I, don't, I probably shouldn't talk about brands on the air, but yeah. uh, I have a personal favorite for yeah. a manual pump, um, and it's the only one I recommend. Ask your pediatricians. <laughs> <Yeah, okay. laughs> they probably know what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, um, the last thing, and we're uh, unfortunately we're running out of time, but just any final thoughts on weaning? Um, <laughs> Yeah. A lot of babies will self-wean. Mm -hmm. uh, other babies, other babies will need to be weaned, and that's a decision that mom and baby need to make at, together. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's a very difficult decision to make, and generally, when you do that, you want to wean gradually so that mom's not too uncomfortable. Because if you wean too quickly, mom gets engorged and can end up with plug ducts and mm -hmm. mastitis, and yep. can be pretty uncomfortable. Yeah. So gradually, so replacing each feeding, one feeding a day with a bottle. Okay. Is, a good way to do it. All right, great. Well, Sue Tansky, thank you so much for thank joining you. us. And Ryan, thank you for making your television debut today. You, you were just us. wonderful. Did How about a final you? smile? I Did bet you, you could. Smile? I bet you could. <laughs> <laughs> he likes the lights. Amazing grace. Baby's brains How don't grow by themselves. The sound but when you sing to your baby, talk to like your baby, me. And play with your baby. I once was His brain cells lost, learn to grow. But now so I'm sing to your baby. Blind, talk to your baby. But now play I see. with your baby. Mm -hmm. 292 Baby is a community collaboration of many community partners and it's administered by Monroe Community College. What you're seeing is a list of those who are supporting or have supported the efforts of 292 Baby to reach out to help support parents and caregivers of infants. We would like to thank each of these contributors for their own unique contribution to this effort. Good morning, sunshine. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. Baby's brains don't grow She'll by themselves. The when but when you comes. sing to your baby, Talk to your baby and play with your baby. His brain cells learn to grow. So sing to your baby. Talk to your baby. Play with your baby.